welcome to this uh, the third or fourth uh, Great Conf Bar. This is the second time we have a tech talk as well. And uh, so the agenda is pretty sh uh, short and sweet. Uh, tech talk is uh, 30 minutes and cheers chat and hanging out with the groovy community is whatever amount of time we wanna keep hanging out. So uh, last time we, we spent an hour and a half after the uh, tech talk. That was pretty cool and nice. So today's tech talk is uh, Micronaut Fixtures and Pinhole Surgery with, uh, oh, your name uh, has disappeared, Vladimir Orani. So thank you, CERN, for organizing this again and hopefully in the future as well. So I'm going to talk about, uh, about Micronaut and particularly about the a new library called Micronaut Console and also about the Drew, which is a library to set up fixtures or test data for your application, which now also supports uh, Micronaut data, which is the persistence library or framework built in Micronaut. Do I need to explain what is Micronaut here or everyone, everyone knows what Micronaut is? I think we can safely assume that people does. Okay. Otherwise they should uh, speak now. Just shout, shout. Anytime, anytime you face something you don't know or so. So what's Micronaut Console? It's just yet another library you can just uh, include in your, in your application, in your Micronaut application. So what is this? This is the Micronaut application, the server one generated from the Micronaut CLI. It, so it has a HTTP server based on Netty, it uses Groovy because this is the great beer. So it uses Groovy, it uses Spock. So, so later, latest on, I will just run it. And hopefully with Zoom, it's going to be quick. Now, okay, and what's else in the, in the application? So I've just copied this from the, from uh, Micronaut data repository. It's, so this is the sample of a uh, implementation using Micronaut JDBC. You can still see some SKDOX, SKDOX uh, uh, tags in here or, or comments. So this is the implementation of Micronaut data, which basically creates some entities and using JDBC, not the JPAD. There is other implementation which uses JPA and Hibernate beneath, but this one using JDBC but Drew is supporting both of them. So what is a Micronaut console? Micronaut console is just something, you, something similar from what you've been already familiar with, which is the Grails console. So in Grails, we used to have this uh, console, which allows you to run some additional code in, in Grails. For example, I don't know, to do some quick fixes, just to do something with the database, to do migrations, whatever you want. It was a great tool and it was, could be a bit dangerous as well because it gives you access to all the database, or all the system, so you can run anything to run your application. And actually, sorry, this app has, does not have any front end, so, but it will have, a, it will have this console already installed. So the Grails console used to be a web page where you can write the code, execute it and see it. But at first I'm very lazy and I didn't really want to spend much time with this because the old one was made by GSPs and I wasn't keen to do something I did on Angular, React, but everyone, everyone here is, is, uh, is uh, welcome to join and write the, write the web UI. So how do you actually launch it? How do you run the console? So what you can actually do is uh, use, for example, the built-in HTTP client in IntelliJ. And okay. Copy. Mm 
and it allows you to, it's similar to Postman or something, something like that. So you can just post to some URL, which is the application that's running localhost 8080. And you're just exploiting the results, you're executing Ruby code and it's written some plain text. So let's say language is Groovy. So now, basically the center point here is the application context. Is it working or not? Language, okay, it's not working probably. Of course, not really working during the demo. So let's take a second look. Just to copy paste the stuff which was working before. Okay. Okay, now it recognizes. Actually, you can see it recognizes stuff. And that was the basically the main major problem with the Grails console was that there was no code competition. So you have the web page, you can run, but there was no way how to how to you know do some better things with, with the ID. So now you can just have the full competition and actually the, the competition with competition with the with the context here as well. So you can see the uh, there is basically only one variable or property available, which is the context. And you can access it, get the bean, and run some arbitrary code, something like delete all the database. And just take a look. So you can see this is the execution result. If you do some print lines or something like that, print line. Peer. This is going to be shown as well. You can see there's the output. Here are the results. And, and if you throw an exception, so there's an exception happening. Let's say, what can I do? Save now, for example. You can see the exception. There's still not the link to the script, sadly, but you can see it's a line eight line, which is not exactly the same. It's a line eight of the script itself. And you can see the script here. So this is the who, exec who executed the code, which language was used and the code itself. Okay, so let's keep it not breaking anything. So this is good if you, for example, can execute it from the from IntelliJ. You can execute it from. Uh, you can actually just extract this and execute it using curl. You can just send it in the. In uh, let's take a look. If you go to the docs, you can see how to how to execute it using bash script or with the inline code or with the external script. So you also in this, uh, in this IntelliJ HTTP client, you can just execute an external file. But this, this one is good for playing around. And so this is the one, one way how to do it. And for example, if someone is going to implement the web UI, you can also get get the JSON back. So let's take a look. It is also better if you want to inspect the results or so just the results are thrown to the object mapper and you will just get the JSON back and see, see the results immediately. And it could be, you know, like a deep, deep uh, graph of objects. So you can see it in the, parsed from JSON, which could be also good for inspection. You don't have to run, for example, a groovy dump or whatever you want. And this is this is what you can do. Okay, so you can see this content type uh, text JSON, uh, text groovy. So let's say, application, not 
it's going to be tricky. There's a question. Yes, sure. Sorry. Is the language equals groovy necessary, or is that only for IntelliJ code highlighting? This is for IntelliJ highlighting. Oh, cool. Okay, so if you can follow the questions for me, it will be great because I can't see them by person. Yeah, I'll I'll keep an eye on them. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes. So this is just for just for uh, just for IntelliJ to know this is a groovy groovy code. This is the trick how to tell it uh, this is groovy. So let's take a look. Actually, not, not yet, not yet. This I'm going to show later on. So anyway, so this is good, but it could be a bit verbose. If you want to, for example, work all the time with the book repository, you pr probably prefer to have also the variable for, for this, this particular service. So what you can actually do is just to declare a new, new class. Let's say repository. So a question. Sure. Uh, there's an, a, a, a question from Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, is there an IntelliJ plugin or how does the console know about the context, the type of the context object? Okay, I will. So the type of the context is declared in uh, in the library. So if I go to, so you can see there is the GDSL file. It's it's a standard how to declare the properties for IntelliJ. So it knows is a script. It knows is a. It knows is going to be the variable called context. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So back to here. So I have the binding provider, uh, implement uh, binding provider. So this thing will allow us to, to add more, add more bindings. So let's see. Book repository, file manufacture repository. Product repository. Okay, and implement the method, which is very simple. It just returns the map of the, of the new bindings. So again, we can just grip this stuff. Say, okay. So now there will be new bindings, books, manufacturers, products, sales, users pointing to this particular, particular uh, services or repositories for this situation. So now I need to restart the application. And in a while, I should be able to use this uh, books property or variable instead of instead of the just have to find it in the in the application context. So I can run it. And you can see it still works even with the books. The problem is that the books are now, uh, they are no longer known to, to the IntelliJ. So what you can actually do is just to ask the, ask the console, console to generate the DSL file for you, which is, uh, 
going back over to here. So you have to save it in some kind of source, uh, source directory. And you can see now it's uh, pretty similar to one I've shown you before, which only holds the context. But this one also holds the books, manufacturers, and so on. And it should be enabled. And if I go back to my console, you can see it's, it's resolved. So you can now just use whatever you want from the, from the, I don't know, products. And I don't know, find all. Well, there should be no products, but anyway, it shouldn't. It should go to the proper implementation. You can see it. So now you have the full, full content analysis support for the for your micronode, micronode scripts you want to execute in your application. That's pretty awesome. Oh, thanks. So now the, the biggest issue is just to migrate to 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 micronote all our applications so we can use it actually. <laughs> but it's it's on the way. Okay, so it was this one. And okay, so this obviously does not work. I don't know why. Okay. So let's let's again just Take a leap here. It should work. I have no, no proof on it of it. But actually, this should be called JavaScript. And you can see it's trying to find another engine. And the, so we probably won't, don't want to write your code in JavaScript. But what's, what's a good point is that it's the, so it supports everything. You can support every language which supports this, uh, what the hell is the name? Okay, so JSR223. And one of them is also Kotlin. So actually this Micronaut console, if you add this dependency to this uh, Kotlin scripting JSR223, should be, should uh, be able to run your, run your Kotlin, ta Kotlin text, uh, Kotlin script as well. It won't have the, the same support because I haven't figured out how to do it IntelliJ, how to tell IntelliJ and the, what kind of variables are available in the, in the Kotlin script. So if anyone knows it, I will be pretty happy if you can help me. But you can actually execute the Kotlin script in using this Micronaut console if you set it up. Okay, so, and I think that's, that was the most of the stuff I wanted to show you about this. Of course, the, okay. Of course, the security concerns, so you probably don't want to have uh, someone else doing the keyhole surgery than the doctor. So it has the built-in security. So for example, the basic one is the IP filtering. So you can say from which IP addresses you want to execute the code. If you have set up some kind of user binding, then you can say, okay, allow only these users to execute the code. This is the example how to do it. And of course, there's the integration with Micronaut security. So if I add this, uh, if I would add this Micronaut security libraries, it will just stop working. It will ask for the, for the username and password or whatever. But you can see, you can still use it uh, either from the command line, there's a hint with the script to use to execute it, even with the security and also how to use it in this kind of uh, micron uh, IntelliJ, IntelliJ files, IntelliJ HTTP files. So if you would like to dig deeper, you can just visit the, visit the documentation. Then again, so you don't want to, so this works locally without any configuration, but if you deploy it to any cloud provider, 
which is considered the cloud by Micronow, it will be disabled. And you have to enable it explicitly. So we know you, you shouldn't deploy it and forgot to, to, to disable it. So it's in, on, in the cloud environment is disabled and you can either set it to enabled true or you can set an until window. And until window is, I'm not sure if it's, it's just mentioned here. So you can just say, okay, set the console until to some uh, to some value and it will be only available until that value. And if it's the time is passed, it won't be available. Just open the, the window just for an hour, for example, just to do your stuff and then just close it automatically. So there are uh, one common and uh, uh, one question. The first the common is that uh, you mentioned Kotlin and that's uh, Consider an offense in the Groovy community. I'm just <laughs> I think that Scala is uh, being an offense. Kotlin okay, is yeah, somehow well, let's, tolerated. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> uh, and then there's a question from uh, Nils uh, asking okay. about sandboxing. Can, can, can I constrain what can be executed? Okay, yes. For a Groovy. For a Groovy, you can just de uh, declare your own compile configuration customizer. To, to limit the execution. Mm. So this is pretty similar to, I think what was in the Grails, Grails console, you just, for example, declare this bean and say, okay, don't allow calling system out exit or whatever, I don't know. But there is a way how to, how to constrain what you, what you want to execute. Can you also decide uh, which language you wanna actually allow to be run? So, you don't have uh, JavaScript enabled or Kotlin enabled because you don't have a way to sandbox those. No, not yet, but it's a, it's a good point. It's a good because point. Otherwise you'll just use another language to. Yes, 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 it's a good point. <laughs> so not yet, but it's, it's a good point. It should, it should be done. And then there's a question from Leonard. Uh, if there is a safe uh, default uh, uh, or default safe customizer. Uh, okay, good question. Good question. Okay, so there should be somewhere in the crew. We'll just inject the customizers and uh, not yet. I don't think there is there is anything yet. Okay. Compile No, there is no implementation yet. Okay, also, also a good point to to add. But it's always difficult what what you should what you should constrain. Okay, so why I actually started with the console first, even the Drew was mentioned mentioned earlier in the in the in the, in the promotion actually no stop it stop it now okay just a couple of more libraries okay Okay, so it's starting, starting very well. Cool. So I have a, I simply have a script which helps me to set up some, uh, set up some um, uh, data. But let's explain the use case. So the use case is that usually you want to manage somehow the data for your for your tests. So let's say I have a very simple, very simple class. Let's call it uh, global sales service. And everything it does is just, you know, it just uh, computes the total sales. 
but you know, it's still the sale is a kind of complex object. So it has a product, there's a quantity, the product has to have some manufacture and again, and so on. And also it's good to have, for example, be stake as close as production. So Drew was actually uh, created to be able to scrape some data from production, not from database, but let's say from API. So let's say, give me some JSON from your API and I will just use it as a test fixture, just to stick as close as to production as possible. Okay, so let's make a sneak match. Package is missing. Okay. So, so I have some different Uh, so what you will usually have to do is just to, let's say in every, in every test or in some kind of shared class, you would have to, you know, use your code just to set up the, set up the object graph, how to call it, just with some manufacturer. Okay, we have Apple, we have some MacBooks, we have some surfaces and some sales. Okay, so just run it. Then it just takes a while for some reason. Okay. So let's say this is some JSON I just get, I just get from my, from my application. I will store it in here. This one. Okay, I think it's good. So, okay, so this is some JSON just describing the products I've created. It actually have some, there's some IDs with a manufacturer product, the sales the cells are listed under the result. Okay, so how can I use it in my, in my test? So I will create just a new test, the one which will be using uh, JSONs. Okay, just takes a while. Because, nah. Okay. Nice time to re-index. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, I know I should probably just go to Vim or something like that, but sorry. Okay, Ruby class, JSON spec. Okay, so this is just the, my template. It doesn't, it won't be compile static. Okay, so what's, what is this going to be? So is this going to be my kernel test? This is a nice phase how to set up everything from my, the application context for you. And we would like to use the data. So, so Drew now implements a closable interface. Before it was a JUnit rule, but recently I just have to change it to, to just closable to be compatible with Gene with five as well and, and Spock two. And this one is actually running Spock two. Great. Let me just set it. So is this the reason why, it's, why is it reindexing? <coughs> so just do some blind coding as it used to be. So we make faster. So what they are going to tell through is that just grab the sales JSON file 
and map the result property to to sale and then we will have to load it the data so we'll just call true load Okay, yeah. Something wrong to create. Looks like, like this one. Okay. So, okay, just load the data. And now I can write my own function or my own test. So, white compute sales time. Expect. And now what I have to do, I have to actually, the micro now data integration requires to, to be able to somehow get the application context. So the test must implement application context provider interface. So I have to inject the application context. And I will also have to inject our service, which is the global sales service. And now just test it, global test service, count sales is 505. So if you just go here, just can say, just sum the amounts in the JSON file. And this is actually enough. So you are just reading the all the all the cells into database from the JSON. And then you just, with the test data, just call some method. So just fingers crossed. Okay, drum roll, it would take a time. Now is time for questions if there are any. Anymore, but yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a there's a comment that says Grails console is pretty awesome, amazing, but uh, this is even better. Kudos, oh. Vladimir. Oh, thank from, you, uh, <laughs> Luis uh, Muitz. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. <laughs> so I have a tendency to do that. Actually, it's just hidden, but you can see the just the test passes because all of the data from the JSON are loaded are loaded using the Micronaut repositories. Basically what it does, it just finds the repository beans. And for example, if the, if the product repository is missing, it just complains that it's missing. But if everything is uh, present in the, in, the, in the bean context, in the application context, it's able to load it and you can use it in your test data. So what happens when your data is uh... Uh, you're done using the data. Can you unload it as well? Uh, well, because this is the micronaut test, it just dies between the between the. Oh runs. yeah, sure, yeah. And even this is H two, so it's just going to be. It's more. It's handled by uh, by uh, micronaut for you or micronaut test. So cool. one of the other ways, which is uh, not. Not usual, but maybe if you're, for example, migrating from Grails, you can also you can also just uh, use SQL, just export the SQL and look. It's fingers crossed. So it's running H2 inside, and this should actually generate a file here. Let's take a look. Okay, or not. It's also an option. So sources through demo. 
Let's try it again. Ah. Nothing there. Okay. Okay, so you can see it works. And again, it doesn't now. So it's probably generated elsewhere. I don't know where. So file is sales SQL. And actually what you can do is instead of using JSON file. So if there's much easier for you just to have some database them, some SQL them, just load the SQL them. So let's create a new one. A suggestion that maybe it couldn't uh, generate the missing parent directory. Uh, yes, it could. Well, maybe there is another tool which is called Fixed, which can do it. And but Drew didn't have not switched to it yet. So I have another tool just to managing this kind of picture in general. But I haven't got the time to, to migrate through to this one particular. But for example, if you know Gru, this, that's one for using the HTTP tests. It does generate the, the directories for you. So this is basically the same. What? SQL spec. OK, SQL spec. So it does have some a bit different. So it needs this time implement the data source provider. And also, okay, it's the file name is in here. So this was the issue. So this is the SQL script. Okay, never mind. So okay. Okay, this can't search. Okay, yes. I just need to disable the generation from, from my kernel data. And then it should work well. My kernel, you have the data source. So instead of application context, I need a data source injected. Data source. And I want to load sales SQL file. So it looks in the same directory, visit in the directory with the same name, like the JSON spec here and the SQL spec here. And I hope this is all I need to do. So it just takes the SQL file, loads it into the into the database, which is bound to the data source. And then you can just run run some additional additional tests. Okay, it works. Any it also could be used, for example, if you are a fan of a database function. So probably there's no other way how to load the database function than just use this kind of script. So this is the way how you can manage your, your test data. And the last thing I want to show is there is a plenty of stuff to, do, to explain with Drew because, for example, it does have a really advanced way how to set the default values, how to override properties or how to, how to alias them. Because if you are, for example, taking your JSON from production server, the names might be different. Some data could be missing. For example, if it's user, you probably don't have the username in your, in your JSON red files. So this is the way most, a lot of ways how to, how to customize it. You can save it in, the, in YAML. You cannot yet save it in TOML, Andres, but if you want to implement to save it in TOML, you can do it yourself. And sadly, it's, it's a, it has a GURM support, so you can actually use it in Grails. You can use it with DynamoDB or just plain, plain Java objects. And that's it. And this is cool, but this is not very useful if you have many tests. You probably want to manage the, the data in some kind of central, central piece, central test data class, let's say. So you can have the 
taste data class. You already see the taste data there. Maybe I can just take time. Maybe this way. No. Anyway, it just, it just kind of normalized. So let's copy the sales. Let's create one another file for products. And the one another for uh, manufacturer. Manufacturers. And just keep it more canonical way. So, so what you actually do, you can also keep it in the, in the separate ones, the separate files, and it's going to be bound together easily. So let's say I have an Apple. I have Microsoft as manufacturers. Okay. okay, extra, extra bracket. Then I can have my products. So let's clean it up just for products. And Another one, and this one, and this one. Okay, but you don't have to do have any additional stuff than the ID. Last one, the sales, they can be cleaned as well. So you can just clean the product itself. Product. 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 Okay, just keep it in, not in the results, but in the in an array. Here as well, here as well. Okay, so. Now there is the concept of prepare data sets. So you can do prepare, prepare data set, pictures, and just load, load manufacturers from the file. So from manufacturers. map to manufacturer. It's products and product and sales, sales, sale. So what's missing here, so you can, you can include include some other prepared data set. So what do you want is to include manufacturers. Okay, this is a bit problem with the, with the context files. So just, it's not an issue, but we'll do it this way. And include products here. So it does have all the all the stuff. So products needs manufacturers, sales needs the products, and it will load the manufacturers as well. And now if I go to this one, I can simply just say include the sales, run it again. And after a while, it should pass or fail. Let's see. Okay, so it fails because I messed up some uh, some of the files. This one, it's not. This one is also okay. Okay, yeah, more or less. Right here. 
So this is the way how you can set up just under one place. You set up all your text fixtures, test data, which can be used in any, any spec you have. Okay, demo gods are not here. Okay. Again, demo gods are not, not helping. That shouldn't matter, actually. Okay. And you can see you can it doesn't have to start from from one. The one of the biggest advantage is that it can manage the IDs across the database providers. For example, if you have DynamoDB, and you have uh, you have some, let's say, GORM or Micronode data, it's still working. It will still persist the IDs even if it's not starting from one. It will still now that forty five is uh, is. Uh, I don't know, MacBook, MacBook Air. Just because, for example, the old implementation of GORM, maybe the new one can do it, but they didn't process the ID as, as they should. So just, just don't ask me what's wrong in here. That's not... Okay, since uh, I don't know, why it's not working now. In the picture. The picture. I don't know, but I think we can finish now and <laughs> because it would take some time to, to fix it. Well, uh, demo gods are not always yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I could try if it helps to. Check out the, the working branch. Okay, which one was it? Okay, so for example, let's start with this one. So it's good to, it's good to have the, good to have the tests for, for your fixtures as well. To, it's better just to debug the issues I was, I was having previously. So this is also how to how to keep your keep your test data, this data valid all the time. So maybe this will show us some some issues. Very cool though. Oh, thanks. Okay, so I think we are now in the free chat. Okay, now it. Okay, so there is some issue with products for some reason. Don't know really why. It could be just because of the usage of the of the JDBC one. I don't know. Cool. Well, um, Leonard commented that we're actually seeing the how useful the error messages uh, are in locating the problem would be interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's. I don't think that they can help you much at the moment because these one were from the, from uh, Micronaut itself or something like that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That was very interesting. You're welcome. I think that we'll eventually bump up the tech talk to 45 minutes. That would make it less stressful. Oh yeah. I have no clue how long it was. <laughs> Oh, you did 45 minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Very interesting 45 minutes. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. And, uh, if ever anyone has questions now, um, turn on your mic and turn on your camera and, uh, and, uh, and join us for the rest of the cheering, chatting, and we can start by cheering and applauding. Uh,
Vladimir. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, please turn your cameras on so we can see who's on the, uh, the call. It's always nice to see faces, some familiar yep. and some very new. And any questions for Vladimir? Yeah, I, I got a question here. Hi, it's Jörg from Hamburg, Germany. And uh, first of all, thanks for, for the talk. I really enjoyed it, especially the topic of generating and reusing test data. It's one I'm just looking after. And my question is, um, have you experienced um, this? Now, now you're using um, pre-generated test data like from production and you replay it. Did you ever try to an anonymize uh, the data with some kind of framework or generate like names and addresses and something like that? No, no. I know this was, I think this was the part one of the fixtures framework in Grail, okay. which, could, which could do it, but no, I'm just using the, the close to production data. Well, usually it's, it's not anonymized, but it's my data. So it just <laughs> shows my pages or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But this could be interesting. But the whole concept is just to stay close as, as to the real data, so it not, mm -hmm. doesn't generate it doesn't generate nothing at the moment. But you can actually do, for example, I don't know, let's say user and password. So you can actually generate passwords mm -hmm. in uh, using the default default uh, values. So there's a way how to set the default values for the data, mm -hmm. and you can generate some data in, in that point. For the for the one missing. Yeah, great, thanks. Uh, Vlad, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, do you have this um, project in your GitHub or maybe somewhere? Yes, can yes. I Sorry, I wanted to later? share it, and I totally forgot. It should be the first thing I should do. But again. Yeah, please, please. I, I liked it and I liked the way you presented it and also the way that uh, you were explaining and also, you know, when you were making mistakes, we're all looking at, the, at that and seeing how to fix those errors. Oh. You know, it's really important like to make mistakes. Without mistakes, yes. you know, we, we wouldn't know where we, we go wrong, you know. So I really like that part and it's really good. You are oh, doing great. You. So you should have the link in the in the chat now. And there is the cheat sheet I was I were using. So you should be able to follow the same steps as me. Hope maybe it's with the same errors, but but it should be it should be up to date to what I was showing you right now. Thank and you so much. Links. Yeah, yeah. Thank so you, welcome. thank you. And thank you for your feedback. Anybody else? Well, if not, I'll stop recording the session and I'll see you to get it out there. And uh, 